Nope. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to another Contagious Smile podcast. Unstoppable. Yes. Because you're always quick to correct me. No, because we just have three platforms and you got to be specific. Is that because a woman's always right? That's right. You're learning. Who said you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Thank y'all for uh, joining in. And um, I want to say thank you to all the folks who have reviewed our podcast and other platforms that we're on and just wrote wonderful reviews on us. Uh, We really appreciate it. Uh, We were going through this uh, reviews for the past hour and we were cracking up at some of them. They're just really heartfelt and, you know, some of them were. They're funny. But what's great is that you mouthed off like normal and said, I hate doing these things. I hate podcasts and I ain't no good at it. Show us some reviews and then boom, like we got 140 something reviews in a matter of a couple of days. So that's our millions of listeners telling you to zip it because they like our chemistry together. And that's just too bad. So sad. Suck it up, buttercup. And they know I don't talk like that. It's kind of, say, say, what is wrestling? It's wrestling. They knew you talk like that. (laughs) Anyway, uh, the wife wants to talk about. Well, we're going to talk about a very hot topic. And since we can do it on Unstoppable, it's not filtered. We're going to talk about narcissism because unfortunately we both have had it in our lives in more than one way, both from the parental units as well as our significant, I don't even say significant others because I don't think right. we've had. They don't deserve that title. Significant. Our, our nightmares, yeah. our problems, our fungi. <laughs> so from a man's point of view, how is it having a narcissist in your family? Well, being uh, that it came mostly from a woman, it's quite annoying. Um, you know, you know, men are men and, and men don't like to be told what to do. And, and, you know, when you're always hearing that and it's, it's a constant badgering and, uh, you, you just, you don't want to be around it. You want to be left alone. So are you talking family or previous spouse? Uh, we'll say family. Okay. Can you give us an example of narcissism is for you? Too bad. Do it. Do uh, it. I don't rightly know, ma'am. That's not going to fly. Yeah. I'll, I'll take one. Your turn. Well, we all know that I call my biologicals my sperm and egg donor, and I am appreciative of them for, you know, what they have done. Um, You know, I, I always say that, and I even pray for them every night. But um, after decades... <laughs> on a couch with a therapist it's sad to know that those who need to be in therapy are the ones that don't go and like it it just hardens my heart because you know I was always blackmailed and anytime something went wrong I was blamed for it even if I wasn't there it didn't matter I was the one who got the fault so I learned I was the black sheep of the group and it was really hard because I strived and I, I really did everything I could to to make them proud. And it was a very non-affectionate situation and surrounding. You know, you've been around it for 20 plus years. Um, and like I said, I'm very thankful for all that they did. Um, but, you know, I am an adult recovering from my childhood, which is why I'm adamant that our children will not go through that because it's impossible i'm i'm so weight conscious and everything because like growing up i would hear you don't want to eat that because then you'll look like my wife or you don't want to eat that because then you'll look like her kid you know and you know look at her she did everything but eat the plate and these things you know resonate to you every day if you hear them over and over and over again and it literally takes a toll on you especially growing up as a woman and hearing those things it's it's hard. So I'm trying to figure out from a male's point of view, what's it like growing up with that? Well, it, uh, it, it's the same control issue, uh, on, on, you know, both women and men, the, the constant badgering is, you know, them trying to have control over you, the constant, uh, putting, 
putting you down as a woman uh, concerning your weight and, and whatever else is, is, it's that control issue, you know, and um, it's sad because then, then when you grow up, you think, okay, that's the way I have to be, you know, that's the way my mom was. That's the way my dad was. That's the way my husband is. So that's the way we have to be towards our kids, you know, and that's not the truth. But we're not like that to our kids. Negative. At all. I mean, I, I'm thrilled that Faith can walk in here right now and say without hesitation that we've never screamed at her. We've never raised a hand to her. Um, and, you know, she's published a, a book that's on the it was on the bestseller list when she promoted it and published it the first week. And, you know, this kid has overcome every obstacle that's ever been in front of her. And she has come out on top. I mean, she's overcome everything that's been put in front of her and she is such an inspiration. I mean, yeah, she's a little smart Alec and you two are little pranksters, but she is an amazing kid and I have to, you know, give props where props are due, just like the other two who I still think of as mine. I love them to madness. I do. I hate um certain things that happen, but I don't hate them. I've never hated them. I always love them from day one and think of them as mine, but it's it's tough um, because of other people putting things in people's ear. Okay. You know, you can, you know, it's like being a puppet master because when they only hear one side of everything, then that's what they hear and they believe. And that's just what their go-to information is. And that's tough. And, you know, it's just, it's a painful process. It's a painful situation you know, like people talk about my biological brother and he and I haven't really spoken in a very, very long time. And um, he hates me. And that's because he only hears things from one side and that's not for me. And, you know, I've told him time and time again, when we have spoken that I don't care who he's with, as long as the person he's with treats him with respect and doesn't put their hands on, on him in an unwarranted manner. And there are so many things that I wish I could say to him that really just weigh heavily on me um, because he doesn't know. And I'm very hesitant for many reasons because I don't want to hurt him, even though I feel like he has the right to know what's being said about him behind his back. Um, even though I have proof, it still doesn't matter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I I don't want to hurt him. I just think he needs awareness. Uh, and, you know, that puts you in a very bad situation because you don't know what to do um because the people that you are in tr you're trusting unconditionally are not being honest and forthcoming with you and that's something i would want to know and it took me a long time to find out so so if we grow up having these narcissistic parents um significant whatever how do how do we how do we get away from that? How do we break that to where we're not taking it into our next family? Uh, the cycle. Where, yes. You know, because some of it's going to be with us and mm -hmm. we're going to remember it and we're going to say, oh, God, you know, I'm I'm just like my parents. I'm, I'm just like this. I'm doing this again. This is what he did. This is what she did. Uh, do we rebel against it while we're in that uh, atmosphere or do we? Uh, what, what do you think? What did you do? Well, you know, my grandparents, bless their heart, um, were night and day uh, on the top, total opposite end of the spectrum when it came to their ways and foundation of basically everything. And I wanted so badly to be them. I wanted to have that marriage, which I have with you. And that means the world to me. And literally, like, I would see what they would do and it'd be the polar opposite of what biologicals would do. And I didn't know growing up, I thought, am I going to be like them? And, you know, the therapist would say, use that as a tool of how you don't want to be like, take that footprint that's been given to you and use it to walk in the opposite direction so that you don't follow their footsteps. Use the footsteps that your grandparents showed you and walk in their direction, be who they want you to be, make them proud. And when, you know, the situations arise where you're like, what do I do? Think who would do what? And then what path do you follow from there? Because I am completely opposite than my siblings and they did not have the interaction with my grandparents that I did. And you can see why, and you can see the mm. difference, you know, money to me, it's vital to survive, 
but I don't thrive on it. I don't, you know, crave it to the point where I'd rather have all the love in the world and all the money. Um, you know, I, I know that. I I just want us to be able to have a roof over our head, food on the table and clothes on our back and to be able to take care of our kids. Other than that, we are richer than anybody with multi digits in a bank account is how I see it. Happy. Because, you know, like biologicals have plenty of money, but I know they're not happy. Right. And not to, to say anything against it, good for them for being able to do what they've done. But the thing I'm I'm trying to like press on about is Money doesn't keep you warm at night. It doesn't make you happy. I mean, it could buy you all the materialistic things in the world, but those could be gone in a matter of moments. And then what have you got, you know? And it, it's it's hard when, like, and I've said this to my my therapist so many times, and she's like, that's what makes you you. But that also is what hurts you, is the fact that, like, part of me is very hurt at the fact that I never even got any communication when I lost my arm. You know, I'm I'm just devastated at that because when I had heard through the grapevine that my biological father had COVID, immediately I called and, you know, and wanted to know what he needed and how he was and whatever. I mean, we're all no contact. I get that. But when your own child has like gone through something so life altering as an amputation, you know, I guess, I mean, it's their choice, but it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. I still pray for him every night. You know, they have no communication with our family or our kids, and that's their choice. Um, <clears throat> I worry all the time that I'm going to get some kind of, you know, information from someone that something's happened to them and we don't ever speak again and have nothing to say. I know I crossed that final bridge when I came clean with my biological uh, mom and showed her proof. And there was a lot of proof, a lot. And I only showed her maybe a fourth of it of things that have happened that she had no idea about. And she could have kept talking to me without her husband knowing, but I guess she elected not to, and that's her choice. And I have to respect her choice. Doesn't mean I have to like it. And, you know, my my counselor who I've had for over a decade is like, that's the greatest gift they've ever given you is leaving you alone. And it's it's just hard because that's not who I am. Because if that's who I was, then it wouldn't bother me. Cause I'd be just like them, mm -hmm. but because I'm who I am, it makes me totally different than them. So it does hurt. I mean, what is your outside impression of the biologicals? Because you've known them forever and you've seen it firsthand too. Uh, my impression. Sure. Piece of shit. Sorry. Not sorry. Sorry. Not sorry. Yeah. Uh, just, just a very controlling attitude uh, on the, you know, father side. Uh, the mother is just, uh, uh, I don't, I don't know the word, oblivious, ignorant. Uh, I don't know if that's a. She's wrapped up in in it, her favorite child. I mean, that's what she is. I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's that's my opinion, and uh, you know, you're the love of my life, and uh, just a little uh, thing for you folks out there in uh, podcast land. Every time we do a show, my wife and I, we sit about, I don't know, foot and a half apart from each other. I don't think it's that far. And we stare directly at each other's eyes the entire time. <laughs> That's true. And uh, if, I should get you a vomit bag next time. Jar. <laughs> if that don't tell y'all, uh, you know, there's something about us. I have had a lot of people ask for you because I talk about you in every podcast, whether I am the host or the guest, every podcast I talk about you, for you to give an insight on me to everybody because they all hear you, but they don't get to hear. So I've had a lot of requests for that. So we have to make our listeners happy. Hey, everything you're doing, it speaks for itself. I'm only trying to help others. I'm not doing anything else. It, and that speaks the inside of you. But we're talking about like from meeting and dating and whatever. Don't try to skirt around it. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And we're talking about narcissism. Okay. But that's a request that we've had. And I want to make sure our, and you're skirting around, not talking about it internally within your family for whatever reason. And I'm being very open and upfront about it. Well, I, in my case, I rebelled against it. Who? Who what? Are you referring to? Oh, the mother. 
I just, I hate being w- told what to do by a woman. Um, except, and you're saying she used to tell you what to do? Except for my wife, my <laughs> current wife right here, my final wife, my soulmate. <laughs> Soulmanship. Soulmationship. Soulmationship. Get it straight, woman. Sorry. <laughs> Don't be sorry. Be better. Be better. <laughs> so you're saying your mom used to tell you what to do? Oh, it, does it every mom? Mine, no. Oh, well, yours is, yeah. Okay, anyway. Yeah, and so, you know, after after living with that for, what, 18, 19 years, you know, constantly badgering, being told what to do, then I went off and got married and, you know, made my dumb decision to get married again. And, you know, there now I have a second mom, and she's constantly telling me what to do. Who? The second one. Oh, yeah, that, that one. So that that was wife number two telling me what to do. Um, and and for us guys, it it really grates on a guy. But didn't it help that you weren't fluent in Spanish, so you didn't understand her half the time? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> I mean, didn't she yell at you in Spanish? I, I, I probably. And you didn't know, and you didn't understand part of it. Yeah, it didn't bother, bother me. You hear so much of it, and it's like that, just that gnat. You just you know, you go tone deaf after a while. Mm -hmm. you're still skirting away you know you talk about how it began at home and then you kind of just you asked me yeah about what you were talking about growing up with it then you and that's it just 19 years of it and And then she stopped she stopped being oh no no till uh, up until last year so she got better after last year oh absolutely not oh what happened nothing happened just continuing badgering you know how moms are. Always trying to tell their kids what to do. No, because I'm not that mom. Uh, no. How did it make you feel as a grown man? I already told you. It's annoying. That's the only adjective you're going to choose? Well, I, I don't like it when a woman tells me what to do. Uh, but I love it when you tell me what to do. Yeah, but when I tell you what to do, it's never mind. <laughs> 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 Uh, it's just, I don't know. I, I, I think because of her, I have that in me and that makes me what? That freaking light switch I hate. Well, maybe it, it just, it just makes me irritated. All right. It makes me upset when, when a woman tries to, to tell me what to do. And I think it derives from, uh, you know, my childhood with, with mom and, uh, even into, you know, manhood uh <laughs> but this light switch he has is something that has been on my list forever he has this ability and i told him when we got married that he needed to find someone who like literally uh broke the breaker so that this would never happen because it was a concern he has always had this ability to like literally flip a switch and not care about someone anymore and that's something i am familiar with um as I was growing up watching that happen all the time. And he he literally would just be like, all right, whatever, done. And that always was a concern of mine. And I told him that he had to go find the source of that power and make sure that breaker never could do that again. So that's the whole metaphor of the light switch. Because if I was listening to this, I'd be like, what's the light switch? What, what are they talking about? So now they know. So. Go ahead. How do you break the cycle and not take on um, that as new, like parents? That was my, that was my question. Right. That's what I'm trying to answer you. But you keep in your, your beginning of your sentence is interrupting the middle of mine. Right. So the way you do that is like, especially when Faith was little, I kept thinking, I will not be that parent who speaks to her. And she remembers those words as she gets older and it sticks with her. And it's extremely hurtful. It's incredibly painful. It, and some it's, of the smallest things stick with you forever. Oh, yeah. Like, why do I remember that stupid? Sh- yeah. Like if, you know, and then there's some words that are much bigger that stay with you as well. Like, oh, if you didn't come off the table, right. you know, oh, well, it's just another operation. If you don't come off of it, you don't come off of it. You know, it, you have to stop the cycle and realize that you can't allow yourself i mean is that who you want to be when you grow up is is to emulate them no is that who you want to be when you grow up and you become a parent who do you want to make your child you know happy with 
you know, a lot of narcissistic parents become narcissistic grandparents. And do you want your child or children growing up loving and respecting and admiring them or as parents that have broken the cycle? Or do you want to continue it on and make it where that child spends their adulthood recovering from their childhood? And I refuse to give them that power and that kind of credit. And I can see that they absolutely had a saying in the selection of male males in your life. You mean like literally putting one in there? Yes. Yeah, that happened. A again, that's control. You weren't put in there by them. No, I'm a fluke. I don't know if I'd say that. Yep, I'm the train wreck. No, you're not. Uh, I, I I took everything away from him. Because I love this moment, you have to tell the listeners what you said you wanted. You're in this huge house, because to me, it's not a home. And you, on your own, said... Oh, the the, the house that your parents live in? Not, yeah. Your uh, yeah. egg and sperm donor? Yeah. <laughs> so they live in a, in a modest 28-bedroom... Oh, it's not that big! 28 room, uh, $1.5 million house. I didn't say it was that. No, whatever. Probably. I don't know. And, and, and I walk in this place and all you hear is echo. It, it, it's like a, um, what I call it? A morgue. <laughs> it's like a museum. It's, it was so lifeless. It was, there was cold, not no, temperature cold, but cold. No life in there whatsoever. It was, it was. I mean, there's no family pictures on the wall that, that make you feel happy and exciting. And, and, oh, look at that. They look like they're having a great time. I can't even tell you, you know? when we went on a family vacation or had family pictures done. The only you time, can't get us all in the same room together. The only time the dog was happy is when we were there. Because <laughs> not the both parental units, n neither one, have a solid, strong relationship with any child. So anyway, go ahead and tell your story. So you were in there. I, this is about the only thing you wanted in that whole house. Oh, oh yeah. You know, I I I was ready to give a prenup to the sperm donor. Sperm donor. But you weren't marrying the sperm donor. No, I was marrying his daughter, and I was taking her away from him. And when I did that, y'all. Yeah, it, it was like, all right, gloves are off. I took away what little control he had over her. I took away a source of income for him. And, uh, yeah, you know what? I, I, I took away that that um, that feeling of, of being a bully to our daughter. Yeah, because but every time were that happened. They always happen, telling her what to do. Right, but every time they raise their voice or whatever to her, whenever literally i would tell her to go upstairs and go to our area and i would get in the middle of it and keep her out of it because i didn't want her involved in that i didn't want her to hear it so i would have her come out of the room so she didn't have to witness it so you got out of that that type of environment i pulled away from it and you walk in our home and and you feel you feel love in here you feel warmth you feel happy you we've got an entire wall just dedicated to nothing but pictures of us and family I, I was going to ask how big that wall is it's huge it's, it it's, is a huge it's the entire wall as soon as you walk in the front door you can, it's right there in your face i mean it, it's a huge wall and from one side all the way to the other and up the stairs there's like hardly any and wall and that's the way it should see. be in everybody's house you know yeah that doesn't happen I know. Because you would get the, you put a hole in the wall. Do you know what it's going to cost to repaint that and get that filled? Do you have any idea? That's what well, you would hear. So there's yeah. always hope, folks. Y'all can, y'all can get out of it. Excuse me. They'll tell you it's pollen. <laughs> he won't drink my unsweet tea. He thinks it's disgusting. They don't let there be it's... a pause. Well, they may think we, we went to sleep. No, that's you. So I don't want to leave our listeners unsatisfied with not answering any questions they have. So I, I'd like to get some uh, feedback. Well, they've given reviews. They're starting to give reviews. They all want to know, like, 
your side of our dating and whatever because they always hear me oh, talk no. about you yes no. and i don't want to not no. give them what they ask for if you're going to ask them for something and they What's ask that? you for their feedback before you ask for their reviews <laughs> and they have delivered it's only fair that we keep our word our word is our strongest gift that we have and that you keep your word what would they like to know i don't know like they just because i'm t- when I talk about you, I talk about you all the time. When I talk about you. Host, I don't hear any of it. Well, but they don't any hear any customers. of it. They, they don't hear any of it. <laughs> they don't hear it. Well, like us dating. I took good care of you. Even at three in the morning, you would call me. I'm there. And I'd come up there with chicken noodle soup or whatever and cold medicine or whatever. But I guess tell them what the, like, you know, the off podcast not working 20 hours a day Victoria, oh, we still is, work is like yeah we, we you know this is my one day off today we were still working uh we're, we're building a shed for our dog kennels and uh everything that needs to go in there and my wife decided to take a break from the computer and the website and everything she does and come out there and sit with me and you know she offered to help and how do you tell a one-armed woman um no babe because i'll still clear stuff i'll climb a ladder i'll right and 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 there i was picking up you know sheets of plywood and putting them as a roof and you know but it's the moral support you know excuse me uh that my wife gives she comes out there and talks to me and brings you cookies cookies that's the best part cookies and a kiss (laughs) which one's better the kiss Good answer. With the cookies. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Mm-mm. Uh, She showed me some amazing numbers while she was out there today. That's because of our listeners. Y'all are y'all are simply amazing. Uh, there's folks over in uh, Switzerland. Mm-hmm. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> that are reaching out to us. Yes. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm dumbfounded that, that there's so many people wanting to hear um hmm. a redneck guy like me my country accent and my beautiful smart wife you know talk about the things that that we had to go through and what we lived through and what my wife has survived so and what you have survived thank y'all from the bottom of our heart thank y'all for listening and tuning in and sharing y'all I, we we see that y'all share a lot yes um you know not just you know, click and download, but it's, it's also viewed and shared and kept. So that's, that's amazing. So thank y'all very much. And what is the, I'll answer and then you can answer. What is the Michael has been father like, so we can end this on a good note since we talk a little bit about narcissism. What are you like? You are there was so many amazing, amazing, great things about you when we dated 20 something years ago. And there was a few things that weren't so amazing, but that's not for this conversation. And you got rid of those. And now you are like all of the amazing and great mixed up with even better. And you're like the fine wine, which I don't know because I don't really drink, but you are that amazing person who is the best part of my day because I wake up with you and I go to sleep beside you uh, because you're asleep before me. But just the fact that like, you're my best friend and you're my everything. And oh, I, we laugh till our face hurts all the time. I mean, all the time. And we look at each other and never get tired of it. And we finish each other's sentences and we're always on the same page. And I just could not imagine my life without you in it, especially after all that we've endured to get to this point. And a father, oh, <clears throat> excuse me, he and Faith are the cutest team I've ever seen. Like they banter back and forth in in a playful manner. And then one of them tries to look away. And when the other one looks away, the other one is smiling like facetiously and doesn't want them to see. And then they catch each other. I caught you smiling. <laughs> And it's so adorable. The pranks that these two do to each other, they are inseparable. They love their, every Saturday night, he's teaching her how a gentleman should be. So 
he has movie night with her and like when we go anywhere he opens the doors and he pulls out the chairs and he orders and <clears throat> and so often i look at him and think that's my grandfather he that's like i know they would have been inseparable i know they would have been the closest of friends um one night he was looking at pictures a couple of years ago and he saw this picture of my grandparents and in every place I've ever lived, there was pictures of my grandparents in every single solitary room. And when Faith was in the NICU or any hospital for that matter, she always had pictures of them because they're her guardian angels. And it was this gorgeous picture. And he said to me out of nowhere, he goes, I want to reenact that picture with me and you. And it was just like every bit of me just fell in love with him all over again. And it's the tiniest little things like he breaks me breakfast every single day and brings it to me and I make sure his coffee is done and I welcome him home with a beer because he has like one beer every day and that's it and um you know it's it's the little things that mean the most um like I don't want jewelry I don't want diamonds I don't want anything like that like happy happy kid is when he said for my birthday a couple years ago come on we're gonna go somewhere I had no idea where we're going and where do we end up as a gun store? And he was like, have at it. And I'm like, oh, y'all better come back tomorrow. And it was so much fun. And I was like, do I go to the knives? Do I go to the guns? Do I go to the knives? Do I go to the guns? And it was just like best gift ever. And and it meant more because it came from him. And like you still have the knife I gave you 20 something years ago that you used to carry on you, on your person in uniform all the time. And those are the things that mean the most. Those are the the things that can't be traded for anything. And I'm here to tell you from a person who grew up watching it for my grandparents, they were always so sweet to each other. And like he and I hold hands all the time. We're always like very affectionate to each other, not to the point where it's nauseating, but or, or nub or nub. Right. And mm-hmm. we, you know, it, it's, <clears throat> we just work so well together. It's like, looking at a table and there's salt and pepper shakers and you know there can't be one without the Did other. Did you just refer to us as salt and pepper? Well, yeah, because your goatee is you salt know. and pepper. That's a rap band. What? Salt and pepper. That's an 80s band. Yes. And then they're not rap. They're like R&B. Whatever. It's I'm not. Old. Whatever. But you're just so like giving and thoughtful and like <laughs> he just comes home for no reason with roses and he's like, hey, it's been a while since I got them and it hasn't One been rose? that long. No, roses. This is the plural sense. So two roses. No, two dozen. Two dozen. Why yes. two dozen? Because you said one isn't worth enough for me. I need more. That's right. So that is... These guys are going to hate me. You bring her breakfast every day. He even does my baths for me. But guys, listen. What she said. She said, I hand him a beer. That's right. When he comes home from work. Hint, hint. so that is the husband father side of him that most people don't know no i'm just i'm just a redneck so what is the side of me that they don't know that you're careful (laughs) your your greatest strength is also your greatest weakness and that's your big heart you got the the biggest dang heart I've ever could possibly imagine on someone. You're looking at me quizzically. I'm looking at you what? Quizzically. Uh, what's that mean? Huh? It's a redneck word. Well, then define it. Uh, like you're confused. Oh. You're dumbfounded. Okay. Go ahead. You're flabbergasted. Flabber what? So, for instance, you, you'll, give, you'll give your last dime to somebody in need. And even though your your biologicals have treated you the way they have, if they called up right now, you would be there for them. That's not fair. Who are you telling me? Me or your heart? No, sorry, I interrupted. Go ahead. <clears throat> so, your greatest strength is your greatest weakness. Everybody can can come on any anything that says a contagious smile and see everything that you've done. They see it. They can That's read about it. saying what kind of wife and mom I am. That's just saying what... I'm, you said the side that they don't see. They see that side. Maybe some folks haven't put it together. They hear it in your voice. 
Oh, I think she'd go back to her parents. Mm-mm. If they called right now. Uh, Baby, I'm sick. Uh, I'm on my deathbed. They wouldn't call me that. Can you come write my will for me? <laughs> yeah, not happening. So, yeah, that's part of you they don't. Uh, but other than that, my, my wife does absolutely everything in the book um, that I don't want her to do. What? You, you sweep the house one-handed. That's talent. It, I know it's talent. You do everything one-handed uh, because you kind of have to now. Well, I can't clap for you. I can clap for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but my wife will, would just... I don't, I don't know what to say about you. I, I talk to you about every... Now that you put me on the spot. <laughs> I still have a full-time job, y'all. And, and I go out and I talk to my customers and... Tell them about my wife and what we do and what she's accomplished. And I just put, put her up on a pedestal so much. And now that I'm on the spot, I, I can't do it. <laughs> I'm a little tongue-tied, y'all. That's not a first. Well, maybe they can get it out of me later. You give them some good news. Our puppies are, we have some here now. They're so cute. We had two. We had three black ones. Well, two are available. Two black ones are available. And then we have gray and black. They are so cute too. And it's going to be quite challenging to let any of them go. They get individual time with humans and they get interaction. Uh, we've introduced dad and other of our goldens to them. And they do so well. They are so sweet. And now their eyes are open. They even have a little blue in their eyes, which is so cute. They get that after Grandpa. Get it, Paul? Ha, ha, ha. Mm -hmm. And they all are just so... And if you talk to them, they talk back. Like if you... They do it back. It's so cute. And one of them is so cute because she always pees on my husband. And I think that's fantastic. It's great. <laughs> you get a golden shower. We know what that one thing is. That's awesome. We have like, yes, we have none of those names are going to stick, but they're so sweet and lovable and they just want to nestle up on you and it's adorable and sweet. And so y'all, y'all check out our, our podcast. Y'all check out our website. Agentageousmile.com to see uh pictures of them. And they are there and they are so cute. And I took more pictures tonight. I got to put those up. You put them on Facebook? Not yet. I haven't even showed you because you were sleeping. I was taking my uh, old man now. That's like the third one today. It was 10 minutes. Your 10 minutes is like, that's why I understand what men do. Like the the exaggeration of time and all sorts of other things. It, that's what men do. Because like 10 minutes for you is like four hours. Because one of your other naps, give me 10 minutes. And it was three and a half hours last night that's pretty much standard with guys no yes no 10 minutes is our 10 minutes in our Baloney. mind no no. <laughs> no guys help me out here yeah uh -uh. no absolutely not mm -mm. <laughs> we would love to have some of you guys on as a guest if you would like to come on and and even debate one of us that would be fun that would be so much fun to get into a healthy debate that would be fun you why don't you debate me he's so red right now <laughs> everybody's thinking it no -uh. yes no -uh. why are you so red <clears throat> i'm not challenging you why because you attend like eight ivy league schools as it is well there's a judge who says he can debate me and win Oh, is that right? Mm-hmm. Just because we like grew up together, he thinks he can. He thinks he's the only person who can debate and win. I uh, I welcome that judge. I think it's great to have a sense of humor. That's right. Laughter is contagious. There's a whole lot back for you, Judge. Nuh-uh. It's that's, already dug nope. for your grave. That's not right. <laughs> 
That's not right. You can't say that. Oh, I can't say that. No. He's a judge. Yeah. I can't call him that because, it, like, I can't see that. I just can't. I can't see it. Um, let's see. Reach out to us uh, on the Contagious Smile. Uh, the support email is still up. Uh, Michael. Is it, is it Michael now? Or did we change it? Good job, Slick. Solomon 4. Solomon 4, a contagious smile.com. And it's the number four, not the spelling of the number. Solomon, S O L O M O N. That's a lot of O's. Just like in a Bible. Uh, reach out to us that way. And you want to be a guest? You want us to be interviewed by you? You want to talk, debate, whatever? We'd love to have y'all. If you have a topic that you would like put out there, we would love to discuss it. If you have a teenager, we want to hear what they have to say because their voice matters and we have a platform just for them. And we would love to hear from them as well. And we have one for special needs. Yes. And survivors. We want to spotlight them because they are amazing. All of our listeners are amazing. Then at some point, I want to talk to the folks about their comfort and support animal like to have them on yeah um, i can talk to you about mine i love my stucco and uh how much they've had an impact on their life stucco is great because when you're like oh, i want to sit next to my wife my sweet boy like moves you away <laughs> it puts his paw on you don't touch my mom it's just not fair it is fair our boy loves his mommy yeah you you could be laying in the bed that's my boy. <laughs> and I go to get in the bed. <laughs> as soon as I grab the cover, he runs. He run, it jumps on my side of the bed and plops down. And then puts his butt in your face. And, and it, it says, nope. <laughs> Anybody else have that problem? The best is in the mornings. He's so sweet and snuggly. I'll say snuggle up and he snuggles up on me. And so sweet. But when it's time to wake up dad... He goes over and wakes him up completely differently. He snuggles me, but then he wakes up dad by like licking him on the face. And <laughs> my husband hates it. <laughs> no. I think it's great. What guy likes to be licked in the head at three, four o'clock in the morning? Probably a lot of them. Negative. Really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good night, folks. <laughs> did that oh one God. good job dad oh, wow this is pg no this is unstoppable so you could you know i'll just make sure we list it as not for kids because then you might get questions like our daughter asks you yes thank y'all for listening to unstoppable we'll and a contagious smile and we will be back <laughs> we will be God. back next week good job slick <laughs>